So we'll go ahead and have the opening prayer by Henry and then stay standing to see the fly. Our Father in heaven, once again we're gathered here, Lord, to partake of this great blessing you have put on this nation. That blessing being the ability to take part in our government. Lord, I raise up our commissioners today. I pray you will give them guidance and wisdom to make wise decisions on the issues brought before them today. Lord, those who appear with grievances, may they do so honorably and with respect. For Lord, as your son Jesus told us, we are our brother's keepers. If we work together, we can resolve all the problems before us. Again, Father, thank you for the many blessings you pour onto us. I offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. <coughs> First thing is the administrative business. <laughs> Okay, first thing that I have are the minutes of October 1st. Do okay. I have a motion to accept the minutes of October the 1st as written? I'll make a motion to accept the October 1st minutes. I've got a motion by Kent to accept the minutes of October the 1st, and I'll second them. All in favor say aye. 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 You up and about? I'm around.
in your packet, there was a check that was issued to an incorrect vendor and was voided, so we had to reissue. And then, so that was, you know, obviously it was a void and then a reissue. And then we have some early checks for this morning for approval, which are right here. Okay. Okay, so this is the park, uh, third quarter, sales tax, remit, $46.13. And then we have Road and Bridge Winter Weather Conference for $300. Is Jesse going to go to that? Or you know, he's he's the well, the registration may be attached to that. I didn't look at it specifically myself. So. Okay, I was just curious who would be the one that's funding. And that's put on by KUSC? Uh, yeah, KU Transportation Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says number of attendees will be four, $75 a person. Jesse, James Olson, David uh, Silhan, <coughs> and Adam Mag. And the training is on snow and ice control. <coughs> it's in Salina on the 24th of this month. And of course, we bought a lock washer on Moon Bridge. And that's a big lock washer. $15.94. Pretty good size, isn't it? It must be. Is that in the budget? <laughs> Was there a front sheet to that right there? I didn't get all oh, I got the yeah, I'm sorry, I had it. I must have had a problem with the scan. We had it in the previous month, the previous week's packet. Okay. Um, and then I rescanned it. Apparently didn't get it all. Here it is. If you want to look at. Look oh, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's what we had the last time. Yeah, it's exactly what you had the week before the review. So. Okay. So this. Week I just put it in there because it's. Um, I um, was going to ask you if you're ready to make a decision on that and include that contract. And did Mr. James look at it, probably? Uh, I didn't have him look at it. You didn't have him look at it. I can. I was just wondering, uh, I was talking to somebody a couple weeks back, and they made a, a, a statement that normally you don't have the same person who prepares your budget and audits you, that usually it's two separate. Have you ever heard that? Um, that's what Scott was talking about. and. Mm -hmm. um, the way that they do it, they have one part of their firm that does the audit and one part that does the budget. So, mm -hmm. um, and I actually prepare the financials and turn it over, and they audit it. They don't, and then they finish the preparation. Of it. So. Did you want to look at it again? It's in my packet last time. Did you want to look at it again? No. Okay. I would kind of like to have. I would like to ask um, our legal that question to what he says. Okay. Just a question to what he says. Yeah, Scott's talked about that with me before when he's been here. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, part of that lease purchase that we are doing on the ambulance, there was a resolution that needed to be passed. It was actually, 
um, signed but wasn't passed last week. It's just a vacant resolution. And so that needs to be passed. 2018-30. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass resolution 2018-30 for the lease with option to purchase agreement dated of September 28, 2018 between Tampa State Bank, the lesser, and Marion County, Kansas, and D.C. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 We do have a budget transfer. <clears throat> okay, so we'll be transferring uh, from Road and Bridge Sales Tax to Capital Improvement Fund $85,646 and Road Main <coughs> and Implement 7 Milk to Capital Improvement Fund. $299,761. And they will all come transferring from the general. You do have an agreement in your packet um, for the MCC EDC, and I figure that for that you might want Brad here before you decide. Um, just to make sure his, he has is comfortable with it. He has received that. And the next thing that you had asked for was um, for the on the transfer station. And so on the budget and cash tracking for that fund, that's what you have in your, in your packet here. So um, at the end of September, this is on page 17 of the packet, um, we see the ending cash balance of 896-099-53 and the um, budget balance of 908682 72 um, Just going on estimating kind of what our expenses typically are for October, November, and December. Um, I have calculated ending balances in both of those. And then um, we anticipate $260,000 of building costs. And then the packer that you approved last week is approximately $125,000 if you consider the rental. And so that leaves an ending cash balance at the end of the year of $400,000. $99, and um, we had budgeted in the county budget for our ending carryover of 549000 So that leaves us a little bit short, about $150,000 short of carryover cash, which if we start the year next year with less cash, that's okay, but you're going to end up with a, uh, basically when you, when you get ready to do your building, um, you're your, really your only option to pay for the shortfall on that building is a lease purchase. And so you don't want um, your fund to be low in cash when you go into that. So, so you were asking about whether it might be a good idea to lease purchase the machine, yeah. and it might be a good idea to do that. Yeah, point. I believe that we're still in that environment. We don't need to look at that before rates get much higher. Would you want to try the local banks again? No, that would be sure. my first off. Yep. Mm -hmm. The consensus then of the board is, is to go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I, I'd like to, we got budgeted back there, like you said, we budgeted 500 and some. And 
Well, well, and that was just as far as for timing and everything. We weren't, right. we didn't budget to buy a packer this year. Right, right. So, yeah. Or next year. Mm -hmm. So, no, I think we should go ahead and look at these approaches to a local bank on that uh, packer at this time. Okay. Okay. Looks like consensus. I have a question. If we do that, is that, um, you know, if we do that now and then we go out and we ask for at least purchase for, say, <coughs> 900000 next year on the building, um, does the fact that we went out and got a, a small lease purchase for this make a big difference to a bank? No. I don't think so. Okay. All right. No, then I will. Not my estimation, anyway. Okay. I'll seek bids on this. Okay. 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 All the years it means is you got two payments <laughs> instead of one payment. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep that in mind when they come back with the number of years, how far you want to. Well, and I don't well, think we want to group a, a piece of depreciable equipment in with a, with real property. Wow. Okay. When you do the building, that will be a separate, and yeah. it will be a longer term, right. I think, than a. Correct. Right. Do so. you want to look at a three year on this? Yeah. I think three years planning on that. Or do we need to? Uh, okay. We could go. We could go longer too. Or that goes. I was told that could go to three to five. On what is the life of the equipment? Well, hopefully, hopefully like twenty years. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because I don't know. Maybe I don't know. How long have we had that crane, Randy? <laughs> well, the crane's a whole different deal. Yeah. <laughs> we go to five to ten years. Huh? I would think probably a ten-year life on a piece of. That's going to be probably. The That's pushing. my max. Yeah. Yeah. So I would want to go much more than I'd like to be see the rates at a three. Three to four, we can look at the rates. Yeah. Three to four. Can they give a could they give a quote on both? Yeah. That that would give us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um three and four? Or, yeah. Three and a four. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh you also do have the recycling and the trans the tonnage reports in your packet. It amazes me how much garbage we come up with. And that's not even all over county. No. It's just amazing. Okay. <coughs> we have three salary sheets for the sheriff's office. Okay, so what we have here is Aaron Slater. He's going from 1736 to 1769, and he has a one year pay raise as deputy sheriff. And then we also have Bridget Maliza, Maliza uh, who is a new 911. Systems operator. It's a six month rate. I'm oh, sorry, it's, she's a new, it's a new hire for $14.34. And finally, we have Rebecca Curtis. This is a one year pay raise as a 911 system operator from $14.62 to $14.90. Okay, um, just a couple uh, reminders and questions. So next Monday, there will be no Monday meeting because the KAC conference um, is going on. And so um, you'll both be near Kansas City. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So just want to make a reminder of that, no meeting next Monday. And then we do have the payday meeting on the 31st and we have an election on the set on the sixth, and so 
typically we have not been holding that meeting on the Monday before the election um, because I use this room for ballots and all kinds of things and people coming to pick things up. So are you okay with not having a meeting on November 5th? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay. There hasn't been a request for agenda items no. that day? Okay. No, I get double check. Not the last time I looked, which was Friday afternoon. But. No. Okay. The twelfth next month is we we move the meeting to Tuesday. Yes, the, uh, <clears throat> the there is a holiday. Veterans Day is on the twelfth, and so the regular meeting is on Tuesday, the thirteenth. Uh, okay. And then we do also have the canvas of the election, and that will be on Wednesday the 14th at uh, 9 a.m. Okay. And then Susan was planning to set a new, another um, auction sale for the tax sale properties that we still have that have not sold, and we need to advertise that to, to let people know about it. And she's looking at November the 16th. Um, I fear good to, to, for us to go ahead and, and move forward with the sale of those, you know, properties. You don't have to be at the sale. It's just, uh, right. just want to make sure you're you're still good with moving forward on. Well, yeah. Let me ask you, what, restate what you just said. To start with, the properties that the county has not sold. The properties that the county got at the tax sale that didn't sell and that and that we now own. We have to wait six months before we can sell them. Okay. And so the six months will be up uh, right around the time of the election. Okay. And so Susan is suggesting having another sale just where... My question to you, Tina, is what are we being charged by her on this situation? Because we have done went through the titles, we went through everything that they usually do for a tax sale. So what, is, what are we being charged? Just whatever her rate is. Um, that you all approved when you okay. selected her as the tax sale attorney. Okay. Well, I, that's because the titles are clear, the taxes are clear, the county owns the property. Right. Okay. I just didn't want to see some other bills because that's there's quite a bit to a tax sale. Okay. And when you go through it the first time. Mm -hmm. I just, I yeah, the title work in there. We should just shouldn't all have should, to do any of that. That's all there should be is just a bill right. from her. Well, and the advertising, and right? The There'll advertising. be advertising. Yeah. There'll right. be some right. filing fees, right. probably okay. of some sort. Okay. Um, yes. I can. Why don't I just have her come and talk to you about it, and then she can answer that because okay. I don't want to answer incorrectly. Right. Right. Okay. I mean, it seems simple enough, but um, then you said you're doing next week. Is that a problem? You'll be here next week. Oh, yeah, that's right. We won't be here next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. Week after. I've got no problem with him. If you're okay with him, it would be there any, nice there to, any changes? No, it's the same as what we typically do. Um, it'd be nice to get them out and, and be able to start setting things. But okay, it's up to you. I forgot you weren't eating next week. Well, it'd be nice to look at a calendar, but whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. If you well, we can do it on the um, 22nd. Go ahead and do it. That's fine. <laughs> <coughs> I'll make a motion to accept the dates as accepted on there, as posted on this piece of paper here, for paydays and for closing dates for Marion County Courthouse, too. Second. So I have a motion by Randy accept the 
payday schedule and holidays as presented, second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And the only other thing I have is just a question. Um, typically, the board has done a Christmas party for the employees. I just wanted to check and see if you're wanting to do that this year. Um, and if you are wanting to do it, it would be nice if we did it on an evening instead of the lunch. Um, and not on, not on payday, but like before Christmas sometime, if, if you want to do that still and carry on that tradition. So. Humbug. <laughs> Did you say do it of an evening? Mm -hmm. Did the employees seem to want to go back to that? Or? Well, it, it, so a lot of them can't invite their spouse or, okay. you know, because they can't get off work during the day okay. to come to a lunch. So. And then having it on the last day of the month is problematic for us just yeah. because we have a lot of other things going on that we have to get ready that day. So what does the commission desire on that Christmas party deal? Well, I've, I've always just wanted to do whatever the employees want to do. Mm -hmm. But it uh, makes, makes no difference to me, I guess, if there's no one. Maybe, they, maybe I mean, this is something that's been done for years, right? Mm -hmm. Not something that just started? No. I always think it's nice to show a little appreciation that way. Okay, it's whatever the commission wants to do on. I don't. So we're okay with continuing to have a Christmas party or Christmas dinner? Yeah. Pick a, I guess. Pick a night sometime. Around, around Christmas? Yeah, we'll start, we'll start looking. It'll be sometime during December. We'll start looking for nights that aren't um, crowded with like school events and, and other things and maybe get you a few dates to choose from. And Usually, if anybody knows in your area is a new caterer coming in or something that you've heard good stuff about, well, we've always tried passing around to different caterers. So. Right. So. Okay, we'll start working on it. It's just getting a little bit late, so I just wanted to see, uh, make sure you're still good with it. Okay. Okay, that's all I had. Okay. So next on the agenda then is Desiree, uh, Dietra, I'm sorry, Health Department, come on up. Morning. First of all, it's not on the agenda, but we are having the health fair. It's November 3rd, first Saturday in November. Um, Hillsborough Community Hospital is in charge of it. And so it's going to be at Hillsborough at the Hillsborough Elementary. So you might want to check your calendars and see um, y'all were there last year and you kind of worked an hour announcing prizes. Right. We're going to do that same format. So if I'll be back in two weeks, I think, to do my regular quarterly report. So I'll kind of check your calendars and see if you're available to possibly do an hour shift because it'll be from 8 to 11. Yeah. Okay. Then I would like to go into executive session for probably five minutes for employee performance. Okay. So we're going to go into executive session for five minutes. Pursuant to KSA 754319B for personnel matters and non elected personnel, uh, specifically for employee performance, Ms. Beecher, the commission. Um, does Tina need to be in? She can. Does Tina need?
did end up working out. The one thing that it really did hurt was the car show. Um, because if I had a car like that, I wouldn't want to take it either um, in the rain and stuff. But besides that, we did have a really good turnout. Um, we ended up making 17, about $1,700 in profits for that. Um, Very good. Next thing, the state's been out. Um, they started coming out about two weeks ago. We did a stocking. They stocked 3,500 channel cat into the lake. Um, just to give you an idea, they've been stocking wiper and saw guy in there as well to try to control the crappie populations. Talking to Craig, who's the fish biologist, they are going to go away from that now to try to bring back the crappie population. So they're not going to stock crappie. They're just going to quit stocking the wiper and saw guy for a while to try to let that crappie population come back. Um, and he said they'll probably end up just keep stocking channel cat, keeping track of that. And they did that on the 15th of September. <coughs> and then two weeks after, they came back out and did a fish trap and gill net set. Um, so they set those on a Wednesday night. It's like Wednesday afternoon. And then came back Thursday morning and checked them. As far as, as, far as he said, you know, fish populations looked well. The crappie population is down but the fish size is up. So there's not as many fish, but the fish that are in there are good size. Um, we had a really good um, shad spawn this year. He said it's probably the best shad spawn that's been in like the past 10 years. So that's looking good. You know, he didn't know if it was due to the low water or what the cause is, but it was, it was a good one. Um, so, you know, he, he said all's looking well. We did do our first CFAP pro, uh, report. It was due October 1st. Um, I believe in the past that's been a quarterly report that's been done. They changed it this year. It's biannual. So our first one was due the 1st, and then we have another one due the 31st of December. Um, so it's not as many. I guess you don't have to do, do it as much, but this first one that was due October was from January through October, so it was like eight months. Um, and so we got that turned in on the 1st. When's your next one due? December 31st. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's like eight months and then four months. So. Let's see. I've been working with Jesse. We've had both outside and inside the lake. We've had some problem with roads, um, and really all it is in there's really four spots outside of Lakeshore that are bad. We have a couple on the inside that are getting really <coughs> bad. It's all just washed out gravel. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's about the same everywhere. I've been working with Jesse. Um, he was going to come out late last week, and I told him, you can, but we weren't going to be able to be much of a help because we were kind of getting ready for this chili cook-off this weekend. And so I believe he plans on coming out this week. I don't know with the weather if that's going to change. Um, but kind of the agreement, what we worked out is I told him if he could drop us off rock on the inside, we could take care of all of that and let him focus on the roads on the outside. Um, and I've talked to a lot of the residents out there that have concerns, and I've just written their names down. And so when he comes out, kind of point them in, in the direction as to where I've been hearing the problem issues are. So hopefully this week we can get that taken care of. We did get all of the tackle that we bought last month inventory um, put up and stocked and priced. And we've been, I've been working with Tina, well, since... June, I think, and we're starting to do the sales tax reports. So they're once a month. Um, we did start selling stuff this past month at the start. So that's that's up and in action. If you want to come out and see it, you can, it's already in display. So you can see you can see that out there. Looks pretty good. I like the way it, the, your yeah. parents when I walk in. It looks nice. And a lot of people have shown their gratitude for that. Yeah. They have. And next big thing for us is we've started our our fall cleanup. Um, 
there's a lot of dead locust trees around some of the campgrounds. So we've been going around and marking those as to what we're looking at, wanting to take down kind of priority stuff. Um, there's a couple of those bridges that we're going to clean up on Lakeshore there on like Stone Arch Cove. Um, campground areas is a big one. Um, and then we do have just a lot of dead trees that are out there that as far as if we can take them down, we're going to do as much of it as we can, and then we'll kind of get an idea as to other stuff that we might need to get cut that's going to require a bucket truck or climbers and stuff like that. So we are going to start that here this week. And then... Just going to stop you there for yeah, a second. Yeah. To the board. This is going to be a winter project? Yeah. We're, right now, we've, we have been going through, it's like been a little over a week now, and we've been marking, and some of them are falling into the lake that we're going to cut up. Um, a lot of them are just the campground areas that it's just dead trees and for safety reasons. My suggestion to the board and to ask your input too mm -hmm. is, is if the road and bridge would train you this winter on a bucket truck out there, um, do you feel that that would be, we have a bucket truck in the county, equipment, and I just sort of feel that maybe if we have one, these people need to learn how to use it properly, and maybe we send them to proper training, um, and that way we might as well get some good out of it. <laughs> Do we have anybody that can properly train them? I think there is in Road Bridge, I think, Diane, I'm not going to swear to it, but I think there is, so, you know, it, it's something that uh, at all times there's a lot of safety involved, and so uh, I just want to know if, if we was to do something like that, we'd take it with the utmost care to do something like that. So right. I'm just throwing it out to the board to yeah, say not to utilize that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's right there, it's, but it's it's something that it, it does require safety. And so yeah. I know Adam's probably, I think mean, he's, he's probably helped some people cut trees before, I yeah. think. So. I think he may already have some experience. I don't know how much we use that truck, but I mean, is that is that piece of equipment have to be inspected just like a crane, or maybe not? I don't know. It should be, yes. It should be. Yeah. Because you know you hear of somebody getting up and one of them comes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's true. But I'm just thinking there's a lot of trees out there that are, if that's what needs to be done, why? So that's a suggestion. Uh, well, that would be, I'm um, saying of all clean up, because yeah. it's an ongoing problem. Yes, and as far as what Randy's saying, I do believe it, I, mean, I was talking because I wasn't sure, and I was asking Gerald and Adam both that question, if there was anybody within the county that had ever done that. Okay. And he said, to his knowledge, no, they've always had brought somebody in. Yeah, to the lake, yes. 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 None yes. of your guys has formally at the lake, no. Uh -uh. Right. No, this bucket truck was bought probably six, eight years ago. Okay. And we use it out on the road and bridge too, but right. I'm just saying that there's it, well, it the, sets around a lot too. So. Yeah, okay. Because kind of our question was for that same reason. I, I spoke to Gerald and I talked to Adam too, and there's a lot of the littler stuff that they felt comfortable doing, but once it become got so high, yeah, or you know, we didn't really have the proper means. So I mean, right. I think if we were to do something like that, it would end up saving us money. I don't know how much the training and all that stuff would cost, but mm -hmm. I mean, there, like you're saying, there is a lot of stuff that does require a bucket truck out there that needs to be cut. Yeah, that would be good. I'm glad you're putting it into a winter project like that. You can get a lot done if you have it identified yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot, it's some of the, like, the main things for me as far as what's requiring a bucket truck is we have, there's multiple places around the lake where we have branches overhanging the road that are either dead or they're low enough to where mm -hmm. a camper or something like that will hit them. Um, and we went around and, yeah, got a good idea. I, and I don't know, I don't know what it would all, what it would all take, but, I mean, they're not real big. They're just high. Right. And so... But even for aesthetics, if they're dead, they're dead. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The biggest thing is you just don't take a very big bite of anything. You take it what you can handle. Yeah, there right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I 
And then my last question is, we had a situation, um, not really a situation, but just an incident that came up. There is a dock out there, um, and I spoke with the dock owner twice, and they have a sign, dock is in use by owner, no public entrance. Well, they're not actually using the dock. And so I called him, spoke to him, um, and he took the sign down when it went back up the next week. And I talked to him again. And he mentioned, um, he spoke to an attorney who then asked if, because he does have insurance on, his, on the dock. Um, his first reasoning was he thought as long as he had his boat on the dock, tied to the dock, that it, he could keep private or public access off. Um, so we went through the rules here, which I brought with me, and it doesn't necessarily state that. Um, it says it has to be in use, which to me, and what I explained to him, was he needs to be located on the dock. Yes. Um, and then he brought up another um, question, is if anybody were to be injured on the dock, mm -hmm. is that his responsibility or ours, as far as I've heard that question before. Yes. That's, a, that's a very valid question, if somebody has heard all that thought. And I've yes. heard several people out there bring that to my, ask me about that. And, and uh, it's in there that they have to be having open to the public. Correct. So, correct. I don't know, but that is, a, that is a good question, because if the individual is legally responsible for it, then we need to re-look at it. And that, I mean, and so kind of what I ended up talking to him is I told him, for now, I'll let him leave his sign up, and I'll try to get answers for him. And because he said he didn't sign anything when he put the dock on, and so there was just a lot of questions that mm -hmm. he still had. Mm -hmm. um, you said he spoke to an attorney? Or did he mention? He mentioned he did. So he didn't say that the no, attorney... Had no, he him. didn't. And because okay. he just, you know, kind of made it seem like he had some questions that he didn't have an answer to, which is why he didn't want to take his sure. sign down. Sure. Um, and I had multiple calls from other residents that had docs asking me as to why he was allowed to have the sign up when he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so we just went through the whole process and I just said I need to figure out some things that I don't have the answer to right now. Well, that's a liability question of our insurer. That answer has to be. Well, and there's also first. a legal uh, part there too to, I think goes all the way around a little bit. Right. Yeah. And so I, you know, and I've been talking to Adam about it and I don't know if we could come up with. Because our insurance, I don't know if our insurance would pay for somebody's private dock accident. Yeah, so but it, it, well, but the docks are the public. require the docks to be open. To so the that, that's, that's just right. why I would think that we would want to contact our insurer and say, here's the issue, where do you stand? Yeah. So I think we need to falls scale and break their leg or something. Yeah. As far as the liability part, right. it should be on the county. As far as the what the, the dock owner's insurance should cover is damage to their dock. Yeah. I would think. Right. And, and so, he, did, he did mention he did have insurance. <laughs> now. Yeah. How much? I don't know. Yeah. And what his coverage? I'm not sure. But he did. He did mention he did have insurance on it. He just yeah. wanted 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 some more answers. Mm -hmm. from me. normally when you enter yeah. In, yeah. normally when you enter into a, a lawsuit on a on an injury like that, they're going to name everybody they can find. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we do need to check that out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I was talking to to Adam about it, because I asked him, I didn't know if there was ever something when they originally put it on that had some kind of rules that they had to sign, and he said to his knowledge, no, and I didn't know if there was something that maybe we could come up with that just kind of clarifies a lot of that. And the same thing goes, and not to change the subject, but the yeah. same thing goes with the, the four-wheelers and things that right. people are riding out there. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of questions right. about yeah. that because yeah. even though it's permissible, yeah. a lot of them are really not street legal. Correct. And safety is one of the big things that I'm hearing about. Yes. And that is something we've talked about a lot as well. Yeah. I believe the city has a rule here, which where I think is kind of where the, 
the line isn't being drawn because the city has a rule you can get it inspected and you get a sticker on it that makes it legal on any street except Main Street, I believe, is the way to do it for the side by sides. Um, and so there, a lot of them are being brought out from in town. And that was something when we've been going over this for 2019 mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, this was done in 2011. And in 2011, those things, I mean, they were around, but not like they are now. Right. Um, well, I think we could implement a similar policy exactly. out there Yes. where you would issue a stamp. Yes. And that's what we were talking about, is trying to make it kind of like, just really like our vote, if we did something similar to our vote permits out there now, where if you wanted to make it county residents and trailer owners or um, home own, homeowners out there on the lake, um, and then they come to the office and get a sticker just like they do for their boats. But with that, the side-by-side -side would have to be street legal with a seatbelt, and the driver has to have a driver's license. And, and the number of people that can be on it. Yes. Because I'm hearing right. that sometimes they put four or five kids, yeah. and yes. they're sitting on yeah. the hoods and all the back, and um, they're flying down the roads. Dumps, and, yeah. I mean, I'm hearing really bad things. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's an accident. Yeah, yeah. So yes, it is. That really needs to be... Is that something our legal counsel could work with Isaac on, possibly getting some type of a policy on on those type of vehicles, where we can at least at least have a little better handle on the situation out there? And I'm not you saying you have to charge absorbent amount, but right. probably some small fee and get the yeah. interest. Well, what you're talking about there are just people neglect. They let the kids on the thing, and that's yeah. what we all worry about. So yeah. like, anyway, with well, six, seven kids on one. The but relatives all be, come out on the weekend. Yeah. And that's what yeah. yeah. But then if they have to be street legal, and when he eyes it sees or somebody's reporting there's something, then he can go out and remove it yeah. or right. take away their, their privilege or something. Yeah, right. Because right now, I mean, there's really... Give them a little strong arm there to keep yeah. things under control. Because there's nothing right now in place. And it's not going to get any better because these side by sides are so yeah. popular anymore. Yeah. I'd rather work with them than against them. And I, that's kind of what I was thinking too. And if we yeah. could just regulate it somehow, yeah. because yeah, I, there I know there was a. There's regulation in here about golf carts, but that's kind of where the extent ended was golf carts. Um, yeah, they don't really say anything about those. The last 15 years, the golf carts was around before. Four yeah. Wheelers. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. The last 15 years or so, it's really picked up on four wheelers and things. Yeah. Side to side and all yeah. that. So yeah, could we have our legal counsel contact Isaac to talk with him a little bit and get a better feel about what we might need? We can mention it to him when he comes in. Put it on our put it on our list for Mr. Gantz here. Yes, something I like I think. That's it for me. Um, for now. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. a off there. Yeah. It's, it's been going good. I was gonna say I think we actually had a lot of campers out this weekend, which kinda of surprised me. And I mean I know it was a chilly cookout, but the weather was was <laughs> pretty poor, but mm -hmm. it did. It, we did have a good weekend. So. Have you seen any K State students out there? We have. Uh, We've had well, there's three groups this year. Two of them have came out and just kind of get, drove around the lake, walked around it, and got a feel for mm -hmm. what's exactly going on, you know, seeing it in person. Mm -hmm. um, that date is actually coming up next week as to when they have to have their project idea finalized. Uh -huh. So we'll figure out exactly what they're going to be looking at this okay. semester okay. Um, then. So Good. it's coming up. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later. <coughs> Jesse, you're up. Morning, everyone. Totals, right? Yep. 
and you have the cheapest one or the, the least expensive right on the top, which is cooperative grain. Am I correct? Yep, I'm correct. So I'll go ahead and make a motion to accept cooperative grain transport fuel bid for twenty thousand nine hundred nine dollars. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. I'll say aye. 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 Thank you. First one would be from GNR with the bush hogs. That's this one right here that I'm looking at? Yes. Okay, this is GNR, okay. Okay, and you're saying for the brush hogs, and they're the 3810 heavy duty. And they're saying, let's see, with the deck ring, 1,000 RPM, dual axle, center section, all that type of stuff, is $15,825 each. Are you you're two, two of them? Yes. Thirty-one thousand six hundred and fifty for the two. All of, all of, of course, I guess all of them meet the specs that you received yes. bids on. Yeah, yes. Then this one right here comes from LVI in Hillsboro. So the specs and everything are the same. So for two of them, their bid is thirty-three thousand nine hundred and fourteen dollars. That uh, LDI is the Rhino? That is the Rhino, that's yes. correct. <coughs> and then finally we have one from Straub. This would be the Land Pride. Out of Salina. And yes, that does say that it is the Land Pride, yes. And there Bid for two is thirty-one thousand ninety-one dollars and forty-four cents, which looks to me like it is the low bid. Thirty-one thousand ninety-one dollars and forty-four cents for two. They're at fifteen thousand five forty-five seventy-two each, and the next bid is GNR, which is at fifteen thousand eight hundred twenty-five each. Is there any kind of warranty? That I don't know. They didn't specify warranty on any of these bids? Uh, I don't know if it's on there. I'm not sure yet. It just gives all the specs on the, um, from hubs to go box to rooms, to rear supplies. Um, Thirty to sixty days delivery. Uh, this one doesn't specify. It, it, I highlighted it at the top. It said from uh, either October or November. September. October or November, I mean. I think it's the top paragraph. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we could have them end yeah. of October or the first part of November from this one. This one. Mike Rhodes. Mm -hmm. The Rhino, they did not specify when. Okay, we could yeah. Have them. yeah. How, how soon was 30 to 60. 30, 60 six. days. So, so they're both pretty close. Pretty close on yeah. that. So, I would just for suggest just for open talk here. I understand we do have a lower bit of straw. That's out of, out of Hutchison or what do you say? Salina. Salina. Yeah. Salina. Yeah. Straw Ninth Street Salina. But at again, we're looking at thirty-one thousand. We're in difference five hundred dollars a year. Six, yeah, yeah, somewhere a little five hundred fifty dollars. For a business in our county, GNR, that's out of GNR is out of Durham. Durham, yes. The mm -hmm. Did yes. you specify in our bid that we would look for in county? No. Uh, no. Commissioners reserve the right to accept or reject any and all bids and to waive technicalities.
I also have to look maintenance wise. It would be taken care of right in the county also. <clears throat> that might save you five hundred dollars worth of traveling sometime. I just my only question is I remember saying something to Mr. Jantz about when we put out bids, um, and if we are going to go within county, especially if they're not low bid. I thought there was some statutes or something on those, and he had gave us a response on that one time, and I don't remember exactly what he did say, how that went. I, I, I don't Maybe then just exactly. ask him when he comes, because um, you putting that you have reserved the right to, to accept or reject in your bids, um, I believe that that language was enough to allow you to accept an income bid if it's reasonable. So it, you're not prohibited from doing that. But if you feel more comfortable with him telling you that, um, he should be here later, as far as I know. So, so we would be looking at. Um, it's about five hundred. It difference. would be right at five fifty, five forty, the difference total, which isn't that much. I just want to make sure it's done right. Yeah, two hundred dollars on each, two hundred fifty seven, three hundred dollars mm -hmm. on each at the maximum on each yeah. equipment. No, I don't mind going and staying in the county or something that close. I yeah. just want to make sure that we're doing it right. Well, and that's fine, and I accept that. Um, I just, uh, last week when we took bids on the other equipment, uh, there was a five to, I would rather personally have had a Caterpillar piece of equipment if I was buying it for myself, but but uh, deer come in at about 10,000 lower. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see that, so. Right. So that's, but here's a little different situation, and I will. Yeah, and I don't mind it when it's yeah. so close. Yeah. But you know, when right. you get up into a thousand right. or more, then right. yeah. we have to think of the taxpayer. Right. Yeah. So I'm also thinking about yeah. down the road if we need to pull well, it in quick and get some them. parts yeah. on it yeah. or something. I would think they would have a lot. Well, you didn't buy it for me if we did it. If we bought something else and then take it there for repairs. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd, okay. I'd like to put it off then if that's the way you feel, Diane, to go to. Just ask Brad. And ask Brad. Make that, we'll make that decision after he gives us a yay or nay or what we like. Or what we don't like. Appreciate you putting that on there on the bids, though. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next uh, is a transfer from Road and Bridge Fund to Special Equipment. What was this? I'm sorry. Uh, transfer that we do, we do three a oh, year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is the third and final. No, this would actually, we're a little late on this one. This is our second one. Oh, this is second? Okay, yeah. the last one's the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're going to transfer on this $166,000, $666.67. Too many sixes. Not good. thing I got two of them here. Uh, salary change for one year equipment operator Ty Johnson. I am a new employee started today. Equipment operator one, Kenneth Glenn. <coughs> okay, Kenneth Glenn at $2,267. Operator one. And where's he from? Uh, Peabody. And then we have Jeffrey Johnson, a one year uh, equipment operator, goes from 2310 to 2356. Okay, last thing I have, take a little bit here. Not like we've got anything else to read, but got some more stuff for you to read. Good. Uh, <laughs> we got a two weeks ago 
all counties received, I believe, even cities and maybe even townships received an email saying KDOT is, is wanting to try a bridge program. Uh, KDOT now has $225 million sitting somewhere, and they would like to put that towards bridges in the state of Kansas. Uh, what they are trying to do is get bundles of bridges from counties, cities, and townships to see if there's any interest in replacing, getting rid of some old bridges and getting them replaced. Um, what if this, uh, what you're going to be reading here is going to be consisting of three bundles of bridges. Three, a max of three bridges per bundle. Um, the biggest thing right now, the, I had, got with Cook Flat Strobel, what's going on is they gave me a list of my worst bridges. They've done our, our inspections in our county for many years. Uh, they sent me quite a list, uh, about 40 some of the worst ones we got. Um, I got a few questions here. October 31st is the deadline to submit an application to just show that are we interested. So I guess that would be the first question. Are we even interested in doing, being, trying to be part of this bridge program? Um, no one knows for sure yet how KDOT's going to accept, how many they're going to accept for each county. You know, my, I put together three bundles, three per bundle, three bridges per bundle. That's what I'm working on right now, I'm doing the max. But with that being said, this program is an 80%, 20% split. So we, have, we would have to come up with the 20% on each one of these bridges. Um, the bid letting, if this would all go through, and let's say Marion County got accepted for nine bridges, the ones that I had asked for, which I doubt that, but who knows? Who, who knows what could happen there? But if they did, we would have to have, the bid letting wouldn't go out until 2026. That's when they would start doing the bid letting. So what, that is what's nice about this program. It gives us counties and cities and whatnot time to save money if we don't have the money right now. And that's kind of leading to another question. First is, do you want me to go ahead and have Cook Flat Strobel submit an application showing our interest and, and of the bridges that I have? Second one is, before I get them on this, do I cut this down to from nine to three, just one bundle? Or do we just try to put all, all nine bridges on there and see what we get accepted for, if any, or all? or um, I did some figuring on, so this is some rough figuring. So for nine bridges, 20% plus I'm trying to include some engineering fees, surveying, maybe some acquiring right away, um, and added a little bit to each bridge as well. I'm coming up with nine bridges, $1.3 million on our end. Um, I, I still feel I might be a little bit low on that. It could be 1.5 to 2 million as far as a savings. Per, you know, if, if we found a way to save some money each year to 2026, you know, I, my personal opinion is I don't believe we would get accepted for all nine bridges, but I do feel we would get accepted for some. Maybe for sure one, I would hope. But, but um, didn't know. I just those were some of the few questions I had. Um, I know this is a quick deal, uh, and I chose Cook Flash Trouble because they know our county so well. They just won another bid on the bridge inspections. They have all of our documentation of our bridges, so I thought that was the easiest go-to of getting the list to me, and we could start working on this so I can get it finished by the 31st. Let me ask, so, let me ask you one question here, what you're talking about, sure. Jeffy. Uh, the bridges that you have sent you the list on uh, traffic count, uh, I think before I would, I, I like the idea of going ahead with something. I mean, this is a future planning and we need to do it for the future commissioners because maybe none of us will be sitting here. And I'd like traffic count and something else just to know 
how we rank these. I mean, they're. Um, I think they're, I think they're ranking them on scale of worst condition, probably. Yes. And, and I don't know. It just I, if we're going to spend eight hundred thousand, I'm thinking eight hundred, nine hundred thousand on one bridge or so. I'd like a traffic count to be a little higher than what we spent on the last one. Yeah, we don't want to be in the position where we're directly required to replace a bridge that basically is at no or little use. Yeah, That's yeah. Is that probable? Uh, traffic count, that is in our bridge inspection books, and I guess uh, that does have that. <clears throat> the other thing I went down on this list of 40 some bridges, they, there's a scale of four or less, and four is like the worst number you could have for a bridge, and these are pretty much all fours. But what I went and did as far as breaking them down is found out what's on dirt and what's on rock roads. I was checking also to see if there any were on paved roads. Because um, there's two paved, there's two bridges on paved roads that show me concerns to me. The, the sufficiency rating of them is pretty good. It's just a really narrow this day and age. But, um, and I still kind of wanted to ask about them if they could even be put on one of these bundles. But what we have, there was a total of 10 bridges on this, this list here that were on rock roads. Um, I did not go down every one of the dirt roads on this. We definitely hit all the rock roads. Um, I thought if it was a major way into a, a community or something, that's kind of how I broke this down, and most of them, there's, I have, we have six fracture criticals, so I have four out of the six on this list, mm -hmm. because there's two that I think we can do something different than other than a bridge. Um, and then, so four of them, I think, are, let's see, four of them are dirt, and the other five are on rock roads, is kind of how I broke that down. I know that's not exactly what you'd ask, yeah, but... I was kind of hoping for a couple bridges, that, not hoping that bridges were bad on paved roads, but, and I still want to ask that question as far as some of these really narrow ones on paved yeah. asphalt roads. Um, that's my only question, I, well, one of the questions I have for Pit Flat yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it has a high sufficiency rating, I don't really want to throw it in on a bundle when, when there's something sitting at 20% and knowing we could have... We got denied that because it's still a good bridge, and this other county had another. You know, right. I'm trying to use them. Someone they've got to fall under sort of use and I guess poker hand here. Yeah, what you got to use to see how you're, you're going to beat our. We got to beat our competitors. Yeah, because not everybody's going to get it. Yeah, and I've spoken to other engineers. I've spoken to many other counties, and everyone's jumping on this quick. Oh, so, I can imagine. Uh, I can imagine. That's why I kind of been beating my head on this, trying to figure out. I know it wasn't exactly what you'd ask, but I tried that. I think we get, need to move ahead with at least uh, the, the interest letter. Submit the application yeah. and Cook Flat said they'd do that for free. Uh, most engineering firms will. Um, and then I guess the next thing is is kind of discussing. Do I go ahead and just stick with the nine that I have right now, or do we want to lower that because of budgetary? No rough budgetary. See, once I give this list to Cook Flat, they're going to be able to come up with a lot better numbers. Who knows, maybe I'm right on, but um, they said they would be able to square that away a lot better and easier for us and have better numbers for us. As far as which ones to, to go with and so on? Well, better just the 20% of, uh, of his project. Oh, like, your, your yeah. estimated cost. My estimated cost, you know, is 1.3. It could mm -hmm. be higher. Mm -hmm. um, they said they would be able to narrow that down a lot closer. Okay. What that actually is. So yeah, yeah. going forward, we're going to need to know how much the budget per year, looking toward 2026. 20, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that would be good thing to move all with that. Okay. My only question on dirt roads is: is the dirt road got five other bridges on that mile, or uh, yeah. I just really some common sense of where we need to be on this because. It is a big project, and we want to be there. We want to be, get in with this. You don't never be 80-20. I mean, we do sometimes 90-10 or something. But no, I, just importance of the road and bridge. Mm -hmm. If that's a fracture, if it's down at the bottom of the list, fracture critical, and it's on the road with five other bridges, how can we do something to the, you know? And one of them that I don't, or two of them that I don't have, that are fracture critical that I did not put on here, is because 
there's two of them in one mile that are fracture critical, but there's one other bridge on there that isn't. So, and I think it's something we can do other than a bridge. Is you know, yeah. so that's kind of why I'm not putting them on my bundles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are those identified as far as your address or the road that they're on or something I wrote like it, this? I wrote it down on my, of where each one of these bridges are. It's not 100%. And they are in that book that, that you gave us that, yes. that they have yes. inspected and stuff. Yes. Could we get a list at some point in time of where they're located? I could print this list off that I haven't scribbled on. That's fine. That would work. Just something for us to look at with this. And I'll put a star by the ones that I have put on the bundle. Sure. I'd that like way you know. That. That'd be good. Yeah. Do we have it back yet today? Yeah, I can just go down there and do that real quick. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. Okay. So go ahead and yeah. proceed forward with this. Yeah. I, I think so. I don't know if we need a formal yeah. motion or I would, at least somehow. So. Just to go ahead and send out a have them do a submit an application. Yeah. An application. To apply for this bridge program. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion to go ahead and authorize uh Cook Black Bill to I would make that motion for Cook, Flat, and Stroll to be our engineers and submit an application for Marion County to the Federal Highway Administration on this highway bridge program for physical year 2018. It's what it says here. But well, that's what it says at the top. Yeah. We're, we're applying for it in 2018. Yeah. 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 Do I have a second? Second. Second by a uh, motion by Randy, second by Ken on Thursday. Aye. 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 Okay. Do you want to go ahead and do the mower oh, yes. question? Well, since Brad's here before Dusty leaves. Okay. Yeah. So we have three bids here for mowers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I know we had talked about this a while back when we submit bids. <clears throat> now these bids are relatively close, but just for clarification to make sure that we're doing this right, we have like a $500 difference from um, a bidder from Salina versus a bidder in county. Okay. Uh, Jesse did put the worries in on his bid that we have the right to accept or reject any and all bids mm -hmm. uh, for any reason, I think. No, he didn't say for any reason. But anyway, we have the, the option. So is there anything when we put out, I know you had said this once before, but is there any reason that when we put bids out that we need to clarify if we're going to look at any county? Or does that even matter? It doesn't typically matter. I mean, it, oftentimes I'll have them done by a governmental entity and they'll specify the preference may be provided. Most don't anymore. And the reason they don't is because you want a competitive bidding process and people out of county can be more and more discouraged if they get that kind of a wording on it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the rejection of any and all bids is sufficient. Mm -hmm. From there, if you then choose to take one that's slightly higher because it's in county, for the ob obvious economic stimulus, and you want to prefer that, that's your business. Okay. Nothing that precludes you from doing that. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, okay. So going ahead though, if we know that we're going to you know, because it does take a lot of preparation yeah. sometimes. Some yeah. of these, these companies are putting forth and they, you know, they pay salaries and stuff to people that it. Absolutely. Is it really fair to put it out to everybody like that? We kind of know we're going to stay in county. I, mean, I, I guess really the general fair? answer to that is that's, that's kind of the nature of the beast. In most cases, people that are bidding have a pretty good sense that, you know, they understand that that may well be an element of what you do. Um, okay. And they are, you know, for them to, to garner business, they're going to put those bids out. And I think yeah, you're right, but it's just the cost of doing business. Okay. In most cases, at least that's how most of them view it. I mean, once in a while, you get someone who feels like they were, well, I was 20% below, and they yeah. still went in this county. But this one was really yeah. close. Yeah. As a general rule, if they're like you were just articulating, okay. so I don't see that as a problem. Okay. I have okay. heard other counties as far as resolution or clause when it comes to like vehicles, cars, yeah. or pickups, they'll put on their you have to add another two to five percent if you are out of county, mm -hmm. which that will tell the dealership whether they have a chance or not, whether they want to take the time to even submit a bid or not. I do know counties do do that, and it kind of keeps the locals, you know, in the in the game. Kind of keeps it all. Uh, it levels the playing field to some extent that way, so they at least understand. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to be how much below just to be in the. Because I think, uh, you know, if you take a city of Wichita versus city of Hillsboro, um, you're going to have, I think they can get some things probably a lot cheaper than the city mm -hmm. of Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. But it's something to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, um, <clears throat> do we want to go ahead and make a motion then to accept the one from GNR? I'll make that motion to accept the bid from GNR equipment for a two bush hog. 
whatever the numbers are. It was Fish Hog 3810 HD for a total of? For a total of $31,650. I'll second. Motion by Kent, second by Randy. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. From GNR. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 So, okay. Yeah. Nothing like <laughs> getting ahead of ourselves here. Here you go, Tina. Just try to shorten your, shorten your words up for you. Oh, can I get you two times? Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Okay. I'll tell you when I don't like it. Mm -hmm. No, they do not show the location. I, I had to do that on my own by going to the lab. Do you have anything else for us in the day, Jesse? That would be it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Lisa, it's your turn. Sorry, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay in that hot seat as long as you want. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good. Yeah. How are you? Good. Something done today. No. Oh, good. Yeah, so, you, so you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Lisa. That one's good. Okay. I don't have a lot. I'll just kind of fill you in where we're all at. Um, data collection for the relist is um, complete. That's where we go out six year cycle, do 17% of the county. That's complete. Um, data entry should be done within this week. The quality control, that's done. So field work for a while should be good, except for building permits and, you know, any other little things we need to field check or something like that. Um, neighborhood land analysis, those are both complete and submitted. Um, residential depreciation, local home depreciation, that's also submitted. Market ag land analysis is done. Those are, are showing a good increase, and I also uh, went to our regional meeting uh, a couple weeks ago, and ag values are probably going to be up for the next two years, just so you guys have a heads up early. <laughs> it's amazing how long that cycle runs. Oh, isn't it? When, when, when the cash <laughs> values are hidden, the cycle is going to be up. Let's see, you guys should have received a letter from the state just letting you know that the county is in substantial compliance. Um, I think we've already kind of talked about that. That was in your mail folder last week. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's just telling you. Um, and then at the last quarterly um, meeting that we had, there was curiosity on how many sales that we kind of had. You had actually asked that. So from 2018 through beginning January 1 through about mid-September, um, there were 266 total sales filed. 109 of those were considered valid. With 109 were considered valid, and 85 of those 109 were residential sales. Would you like to know that? And there's a little, we did a little quick breakout of, I mean, if y'all want to, that's just kind of showing you which ones are, you know, amount of valids and invalid and all of that, class by class. What constitutes in, invalid? Invalid is if it's um, related parties or not open markets, um, auction sales not well attended, um, word of mouth that just, I mean, was just basically okay. thinking of selling this, here you go. And, uh, auction sales to me, has, has, uh, I've asked this question ever since I've been here. And auction sales has been the one that they seem to pick on to where it's not a valid sale. And it's, it just amazes me that when I see five bidders or six bidders, that that's more than a real estate person has to show a house, but yet they're considered because it's on the market. They take, they take a realtor and they sell it. Mm -hmm. But yet an auction sale sometimes is knocked off of the deal. I mean, I'm not saying all of them, I'm just saying it's been told to me a lot of times that that's one of the markets that sort of tough to, to it's tough to deal with. I understand. And, and some of the reasons why we do invalid or, or consider those non-valid is because most of the time or some of the time they're under a duress, meaning the, the buyer or the, the seller, I mean, doesn't have an option but to auction it. And so they may not get everything that they're hoping for. Um, isn't necessarily the case all the time. A lot of times there's ag land out there that is well attended 
and you know, sells higher than if it was just to be listed somewhere. Yeah. So it just depends upon the class and the amount of attendees. And we actually do call on those um, most of the time, unless it's something that we know is definitely a, a bad situation. And then I guess the final was just um, starting our market modeling. Uh, that should be completed within the next couple weeks as well, and then I'll start commercial. Other than that, everything is on schedule or ahead of schedule. So good. Yeah, good. Do you guys have any other questions or any concerns? I don't know that nope. I have anything. <laughs> Everything's doing fine. Yeah, everything's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. It was well, was funny though. Last year I stood up at the state meeting that this guy's going to attend here next week, and I asked that very same question I'm stating right here about auction sales and your head head man, the guy that come down and seen this and sat here and visited with me quite a few years back. Uh, said, well, sometimes we just don't have an answer to that. Uh -huh. That's exactly his comment in front of all the <laughs> people who was in the room, and I just. Well, there's got to be an answer. I, I try to have an answer. Yeah. I don't always have yeah. one. But. I know. <laughs> I know. And, and you've got to follow their, their rules. You're not making the rules. No. It's Topeka's making the rules. And something I will let you guys, if I have a second, something I'll give you guys kind of heads up on, which was another shocker that we had at our meeting. Um, we had two of the um, higher ups at state at our meeting a couple weeks ago. There is strong, strong push. Um, from a group in Topeka trying to make county appraisers and the office a state entity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know if y'all knew that. I heard that. Thought I'd give you that update. Just, you know, that would kind of change the life of the county a little bit. So, <laughs> the state. Well, and that was what was interesting. Um, they asked, you know, how. Uh, you know, how would this impact the state? Well, when they discovered how much it would increase the state's budget and the state employee level and everything, it kind of made the higher-ups on the state side go, ooh, well, maybe that group doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but just thought I'd give you a heads up since we did kind of talk about that, too. Mm -hmm. Is that group known? I believe they said it's the Chamber of Commerce for the mm -hmm. area. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, it does. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna, they want to tax us for hicks out here from Western Kansas, from Topeka on. They want to tax us. And that's what it's about. I mean, it's writing's on the wall. You could that uh, grant deal that I went to with oh, uh, up there. You know, the, the grants was all given. There was one or two out here by Junction City or someplace out here, but most of them ninety. 95% was all back that part of the Kansas. Mm -hmm. That's poor Western Kansas sometimes don't get <laughs> too much of the good stuff. That's just so did you hear also that it's, uh, they're proposing, depending on how the election goes in November, that even on property evaluations and things, that they're going to put a cap on it as to, I think, 2% increase at a time a bit? I had not heard that, but I had heard that there is talk of doing basically the appraisal process once every two years. I hadn't heard the cap yet, mm -hmm. but that was the other thing, and it's like, which means your value would basically stay the same for two years. Mm -hmm. well, amen. There's no talk of the market valuation on that. Well, anyway. and see, and that's what that's what we are concerned about is if you know we do have to follow that. My goodness, what's going to happen at the end of those? You know, a lot can change in a year. I yeah. mean, that's why we do the analysis is every single year. But that would stop that process, and it would stop the evaluation process for an, an extra year. And there's still a, a lobby for that from Northeast Kansas, correct? Yeah. 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 That's all I have. Thank you. It would change, right. it would change the much. agricultural yes. world. Have a great day. You too. Thank you all. <laughs> 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 you might not either, Brett. Yeah, I might decide it's time to quit. <laughs> you are next on the list, sir. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to go into executive session. Is Yvonne one, not there? To one thing that's been, been you know, Yvonne, we need to check it. Before you before we get into that's about Marin County Lake before we got no door closure. Before we get into the safety deal. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, uh -huh. or Isaac. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. 
Okay, well, yeah, we were talking about uh, out of the lake. We have got um, a lot of people that now bring out four wheelers and RVs and things like that. Little, UTVs little and stuff. Yeah, stuff well, like yeah. that. And we don't have any policy in place mm -hmm. as far as criteria that they need to meet. And we've been getting a lot of phone calls from uh, residents out there saying about a lot of unsafe things happening, a lot of kids piling on and different things like that. And so we would like to know if you could maybe assist yep. Isaac in uh, preparing something that we could go by uh, to enforce safety matters uh, and actually inspection procedures or all the above? I can talk to Isaac about it, but I already got one that's oh, okay. um, uh, utilized in other counties, I know, but also in cities that generally puts a significant uh, set of criteria. They're not, it's not crippling, mm -hmm. but it basically all the safety requirements that we typically see on any other vehicle uh, become part and parcel of that. So, okay. right, you know, that happens a lot. It's okay. a pretty frequent yeah. thing. Okay, yes. another thing before, maybe before you do your executive session, we have that agreement that was in your pocket yeah. for economic development. Yeah. Did you need um, that? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay. Kept it fairly simple, fairly short, and the, the basic control element of it. Now it's back to the, you know, we thought, discussed this the last time we talked about it, whether um, it's sufficiently controlled from the county commission's perspective or not. Um, that's entirely up to you. But this basically spells out the paymaster element of it and us going forward with that um, and then the reimbursement from that. So. And I did have some questions on that for you mm -hmm. since I was reading through it. Um, and it says that the um, in the event the MCC engages an employee who brings the, okay, does not qualify for benefits, and that would be like a part-time person. Mm -hmm. I, I was under the impression that Catherine was part-time. Is she part-time? She is. She is part-time. Okay, so then she does not qualify then for benefits. I don't know what her part-time status is, just part-time. So she would be one then that we would not. Well, the way that this, I believe, is worded is we would still do their, the pay be the pay agent and then they would reimburse us for the expenses because they're still, um, which is one thing that I was wondering about too, because does this take effect when we when they hire a full-time person and then we take care of all of them? They're taking care of it themselves yeah. right now and the issue is on the capers, um, there's a thousand dollar limit per year, which is less, less than 20 hours a week. We don't know how many hours this person is working and we would have to probably specify something saying that part time, you know. Yes, and it, and when I looked at that and I made some notes about it, and I haven't, yes, I did too. I talked to Clint about that briefly, but not in final detail till they got to this point. Um, we can do that separate and apart from this agreement, or you can make it a part of this one if you wish. Generally, this is just kind of the, the skeletal structure of it. This is how we're, we're agreeing to do this, and then. It still hasn't been sorted out because they haven't hired anyone yet on the full-time position. Don't know what that does to, from my perspective, I don't know their inner workings that well, what that does to the secondary person in terms of uh, the amount of work that that alleviates, how many hours they then will pay for that person. Will it go uh, to a thousand? Will it be below a thousand? So difficult to work that into the first agreement because I wasn't sure exactly what they were going to end up with. Well, see, that, that is sense. in our employee manual and the way that they were talking is that they are county employees and that they would be subject mm -hmm. to our manual, mm -hmm. even though we don't have the direct oversight. So, I mean, that piece of the number of hours is yeah. addressed in the handbook. Yeah, and, and I mentioned that to him too. And also when I talked with Capers, same thing, you know, in terms of the, their kind of the general list of questions and the thousand hours is the primary thing they look at once we become the employer for that purpose. Um, the rest of it kind of just goes falls on the wayside. Other than how many hours are they working and what are they going to substantiate? So. Okay, so when it says for um, who qualifies for benefits, shall be county employees have access. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the event that they do not qualify, so you're saying that would come out of the employee handbook and determine mm -hmm. who's part time and who's mm -hmm. not. So when I questioned and asked if it includes Catherine at this point in time, it would not. If we know how many hours she works, I thought she well, was high she's, up to twenty. She, um, under this agreement, all of any of their employees would would be under this agreement as soon as it's right. adopted. I think unless she put something in here that says 
it'll be triggered by the hiring of a full-time, no. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, no, because nothing like that so far. Kept it very basic, and obviously, by, based on its brevity. When you're saying benefits, that's kind of broad, because benefits, the way most people think of benefits, is like our capers, or insurance, and that. But there's also unemployment, there's workers' compensation, okay, there's other things that, out here. that um, are not um, limited. So whether you're full-time or part-time or any of those, that all of that is applicable. So even a part-time person would qualify for those benefits. Okay. So would, should we not maybe separate that and, and make that? We certainly can. Like I said, when I started this, I was going, well, okay, I'll keep this as basic as we can. So the more I kept adding to it, I kept scratching my back up, and okay, mm -hmm. don't know if it's even going to apply. Yeah. But I don't necessarily disagree with you. If you want that to be um, specified a little more specifically and, oh, and outlined, and then I can also, the one thing I should, probably should put in this is that it's self-evident that our employee manual applies, obviously, if they're going to be considered our employees, and we will go by that generally for okay. purposes of um, qualification. Classification. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then I noticed also it, it says in here uh, that also includes business transportation expenses. Why would we be reimbursing for business? That's not payroll. Uh, and so why would we include A lot of times those are um, reimbursed through, through payroll. Mm -hmm. um, and that was their As thought. a net adjustment. And then it wouldn't be the county paying for it. They would be paying for it. Right. And the county does pay. Uh, travel expenses for certain instances for employees. So, if they're going to meetings, okay. Or that, so usually that comes under. A, we usually are issued a separate check for that when we have reimbursement of mileage or whatever it is. It depends on what it is. Sometimes if it's a meal or it, it comes through at, on their with your mm -hmm. paycheck. Mm -hmm. It depends on what it is. Sometimes it's a taxable benefit, and so you have to include it as as payroll so you can tax it. So there might be some instances where travel expense would be a proper thing to be including on, on the payroll check. Okay, and then the other thing that I've seen on here, um, it says in here based upon the, uh, it, it's married kind of to the, um, I see on here, but it's married in here also to their bylaws. Can I read that in here? Something about the bylaws? Um, up in the very second, the second paragraph um, is including small business concerns, retail manufacturing service, as stated in the bylaws. That's it's referenced there, but that's okay. really just their business purpose, if you will, or their. It's just their business because yeah. I know their bylaws are constantly changing their bylaws all the time, and I think right now they're undergoing a major bylaw revision. change, revision, and things, and, and I kind of. I don't know what they're changing, but I'm just saying they're undergoing changes in the bylaws. No, you've worked with them on that mm -hmm. also. They, are they still working on it, or is it pretty much done? We haven't talked about it for some time now. Since yeah, they, kind of they spent up. most of their last meeting talking about the bylaws. So, um, but that's where that will only stay, is right there to include yeah, the, uh, they didn't purpose? I think everything else was excluded at that point, and as far as I can tell, I'm just a quick scan. There's no other reference to it other than that at this point, and that's really just their purpose for existing you know, and, and how that works, and as opposed to the nuts and bolts of how they're going to treat an employee and how they're going to pay for them, et cetera. Okay, so I know we had discussed one other thing. At one time I had asked about putting a, a declaration or something, um, not declaration, I was going to put it in the really right now, uh, um, a definition of uh, release of liability from the county. Uh, something to protect us. An indemnification. Identification, that's what, mm -hmm. I, that's what mm -hmm. I was looking for. Yes, and I don't see that that's in here. No, I did that as a separate document that I've got in place depending upon how much needed to change in here. And I don't have them, have not even given it to them for approval yet, but part and parcel of this process would be that that is, the understanding is that on those elements that we're taking on that are really something that they're reimbursing or requesting, that they do that in terms of identification. But I did it as a completely separate, standalone document. Okay. Um, it's a lot of documents, huh? Mm -hmm. and, and again, you can try to go ahead and, and do it all in one. Um, it starts to get lengthy, and then you start having the, a lot of the what ifs. 
that may or may not apply. So I, from what Clint had prepared, I thought, okay, a few paragraphs basically spells out what they're intending in terms of this uh, assistance with the pay. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's going to be, depending upon who you hire and what you have them do and what the job description is and how you want to have that function, um, there are going to be some other things that are probably going to be explicitly needed. One of them being like that when we discuss that. Um, there may be some changes to how the, again, how the compensation is calculated and done and all of that depending upon what their function is and how they work. How it's calculated? Mm -hmm. um, By that I mean in terms of whether we're going to go ahead, whether it will include travel and transportation expenses, whether it's something that's really part of our manual in terms of an employee who would have that benefit um, separate and apart from what they do in their day-to-day -day instructional um, job description. And that's in fact one of the things that we had discussed at one point in time when I brought up some of the policies that the employee pays for and then we reimburse. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't even finalize that yet as far as changing the county yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we do have a policy in place right now. Right. I, I, and, I and they, would, that, but they would be bound by that in, in its current form as well as any changes just like any other employee based on how this has been done. But this statement here to me is kind of troubling because either they are or not, mm -hmm. you know. And when you yeah, just say shall not be considered. They didn't. Even <clears throat> yeah, that one is. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think probably we we do need a little bit of additional attention to that one in the third paragraph down, that last sentence that you started with in terms yeah. of this discussion. Because yeah. this shall not be considered an employee, um, shall not be considered a covered employee, shall not be considered, you know, certain other things. But it's, it's as Tina was just saying, I think it's either it is or it is not if we're going to do this. Or you're going to have to say what benefits yeah. specifically because benefits still, like we talked about, do include, mm -hmm. I mean, for our intents and purposes, unemployment and yep. those things. Are yeah, the common, all, of all of those things are not so then by doing this, and this is just a general question, it's not in here at all, if something would happen to one of these employees, I don't know, let's just say the director that they hire takes and falls and hurts herself and takes out a workman's compensation, and the county is home for that then, right? Yeah, because it's considered an employee, so it's going to run under a policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the questions I had. So you're going to make some revisions Yeah, it sounds like I'm going to need to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would that something like that be reimbursable then from MCC? We can, with that indemnification provision it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we will include that. Mm -hmm. in okay. So then we'll wait till you revise this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this I was hoping I'm was sorry. doable, but it's not. <laughs> but no, it's a good question. I mean, and again, the, the whole function of this is to make sure that you guys are very clear on what it is you're agreeing to do. Right. Um, and, and that they understand, too, that it's got a limitation to it. And it's difficult. I knew that from the first day we talked about this. They're like, okay, we, we are, but we're not. And mm -hmm. we will, but we won't. Uh, it gets to be tough. So, yes. Okay. It is very tough. Some more changes. Okay. <coughs> Sounds like a mistake for a We will, but we won't. <laughs> okay. So that was my questions on that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, instead of going into executive mm -hmm. session, Okay. Sorry, I'm just the doc. Did you guys bring that up too for the, the legal thing? The what? The doc. At the doc. Oh, uh, I've got that on the Well, list. yeah, he's going to talk to Isaac about that. Already. Oh, okay. oh, he has one already planned. We already did talk about that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move to go into executive session with Mr. Jantz and the commission. Um, does Tina need to be in, Mr. Jantz? Mm -hmm. Tina, we're seeing KSA 754319B. Uh, for consultation with our attorney, uh, possibly about secret, I'm sorry, no, um, about him and litigation. <laughs> litigation wants to be secret. Yes. <laughs> secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, ten minutes should be Well, secret. approximately ten minutes. Do I have a second? The same person who prepares our budget, audit our budget. Um, what do you think about that? I know, a lot of, I know in other boards that I'm on, where we have large budgets, that's, that is the case to where we have not the same person mm -hmm. who prepares it, does the auditing. And uh, it works, I mean, it's just like so transparent. In that firm, you mean you have two separate firms? Yeah. 
not two separate people mm -hmm. because we don't have the same people within the Right, room. right, but it's, okay. it's a different firm, yeah. Just clarifying it because that's not the way you said it. It's no, but, yeah, that's okay. Firm. One firm prepares and <coughs> works with us on it, and then the other firm comes in and does the audit. I'll give you the legal answer to start with. It's okay. not mandated um, that you have to have to separate that to that degree. Okay. Then the pragmatic answer. Is it a good idea in some cases to have someone else oversee what was done by another? Yes, yeah, it always is. Just because in those circumstances they might see something or catch something, mm -hmm. and it's two sets of eyes from two different perspectives subjectively. Dollar-wise, so, it's almost always the same. Yeah, I was going to say your cost factor can sometimes be a little less if it's merged. I don't know that I've really seen that be a significant difference um, between the, the one who prepares your budget and then your auditor. Or what I consider to be a traditional auditor. Those, those, if you put those dollar amounts together, in most cases they're very similar. Um, there, there may be a small percentage of savings if it's one and the same. But um, do I like seeing them be separate? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's for that reason, it's nothing against who you're currently using in any way, shape, or form. I, I it's just a matter of pragmatism. And I agree, and that's what was brought. Like I say, on the other boards that I'm on and stuff, it just eliminates any type of. Yeah. Most, I would say, the vast majority of the ones that I work with do separate that feature, and they're using a different type of skill set when they're preparing the budget versus when they're auditing. At least that's what they say. Mm -hmm. um, and depending upon the, the circumstances, they're all kind of driven by a particular organization. But as a general rule, that pragmatic element of it, I like to see the fact that. Okay, well, this was all prepared by someone that did a good job, and you should consider what they did very workmanlike. Or, I've got some questions. Well, that's really useful sometimes for you to be able to now analyze all of that. Mm -hmm. cool. So, before we sign that, would we need to, because I think, isn't that included in there? If I just over I, I have not seen this. It. Well, wait a minute, I need to. This is what because you talks this about. Out, whatever. It talks yes. about 2000, up to 2000, I think 22, 2020, 2020. Yeah about them being the auditor and the budgeting, and I'm just wondering if we should maybe... Mm -hmm. It looks that way, because we're still... Uh, yeah, it, I would say we probably would want to clarify that with them, just so there's a clear understanding. Well, I'm sure it's for both. It talks about budget preparation mm -hmm. and audit. Mm -hmm. so I was looking for yeah. It does. The last two pages for sure does. So it's a matter of whether the board wants to go out and bid on those uh, oh, yeah, services or, which one. or, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, whether you want them to do your audit and have someone else do the budget preparation or vice versa. Would be the second piece of it. I guess my personal preference would be to have somebody else come in and do the audit mm -hmm. because I think he works very well with Tina mm -hmm. and knows pretty much everything as far as guidance to the budget. I mean, uh, am I right? He works, he works really well with that. I work with, great with all of their, their whole firm, so it's, mm -hmm. it, that's irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. So, so. I think I can work with anybody. pretty much anybody. But they do have a good background. They know our finances. Mm -hmm. They know the way our accounts are set up, so that also helps them be expedient mm -hmm. with the audit purpose as well. Mm -hmm. so they've already done our budget for 19. They haven't mm -hmm. done our audit. But mm -hmm. So I, we probably already signed one for 19. So no, this includes 19. Uh, it, I well think this, so. This would be for your audit. audit. Um, for okay. um, you did sign something for your budget for. He's kind of aggregated them though in terms of proposed audit and budget contract for the years 18, 19, and 20. So I haven't got that for budget, but yeah. I think it would be wise to split it. I don't have any problem with that. I would like to stay with our our accounts for the bud budget preparation just because their knowledge of the county I agree with audit that. could be someone else. That's what I would think. So then, how would we have to do that then? Well, this we would just alter. That's fairly straightforward in terms of letting them know that that was your decision. And your secondary question would be, you know, do you, and I assume you do, want to go ahead and put a request for proposal together for auditors? Do we need to take official action on that? Or? or at least direction to prepare something to that effect, and you can approve that proposal and let it go out all the same time. Okay. 
just so I think a, a, a simple motion vote to do what you said, if that's what the board mm -hmm. wants to do, to stick to stay with Swindle James yeah. for the for the budget, budget or to seek a proposal for just that, because that could way. change. Something. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a motion then to stay with Swindle, Jansen, Hawk, and Lloyd uh, LLC for the preparation and working of the budget um, purposes and to seek bids for another firm to conduct audits for the county and Marion County going forward. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Opposed by Randy. So then the next thing on the agenda is Mr. Trout, EPM Temperature Control Systems. Sir, come on up. Have you sit right over there now. Uh, All right, so everybody can hear you. Okay. Well, that's not generally a problem. It's not generally a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. I think that's true. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. No worries. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm being paid. Good. <coughs> Okay, last time I was here, you had asked me to look at energy usage <coughs> and via a, what we call a feasibility study, which is a fire from the hip approach. It is, it is very generalized. I spent some time with Mike, and he showed me around the building. We looked at the heating, cooling, uh, fan coils, valves, a little bit of the piping down in the boiler room, computer room, water heaters, things like that. Uh, building structure, windows, the floors, the arrangement, uh, usage, and we kind of put all this together. Again, this is fire from the hip, so let's, uh, let's approach this in a general sense. What what we found out is, first of all, you're spending, you, you last year, you spent $39,687 and some change on utility bills. A significant portion of that, of course, was electric, as is electric, but you are not demand bill yet. So that's going to be some help for now. Now I promise that will change. Okay. Even at my house I have to determine within a month uh, what kind of man billing I want to go to. And it's just horrible. So it's, it's just, it is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. Studying your utility bills just in square footage alone offset only for usage, meaning that you don't use the attic nor do you heat and cool it. Things like the boiler, boiler room stays hot whether it's air conditioning or heating because of that mechanical equipment and it's not cool. So offsetting for the space that is conditioned, you are using, which wasn't much by the way, you are using 87.4 kilobtus per square foot per year. You convert your natural gas and your electric and demand, which you don't have any, to kilobtus and you're using 87.4 .4 kilobtus per square foot per year. Combining the facility category, which is public assembly, open roughly eight hours, plus weekends as a general rule, except for special events, auctions, things like that, or election press, things like that. The Department of Energy uh, combined, kind of mixed with what our history says with our control systems, we can get, comes at 55.6 kilobtus per square foot per year. That's an opportunity of 36% straight off the bills. Okay. That, is third, that equates to 31.8 kilobtus per square foot. So if you were using 37 <coughs> for every square foot of building space, you should be using 31.8. Now, not all of that is, is available. Lights have to run, computers have to run, things have to charge, you know, so not all of that is obtainable. That said, utility dollars alone uh, straight off off the bill without any consideration of anything else is fairly easy fourteen thousand four hundred dollars however with monitoring ie running equipment when it's not supposed to be running uh, not running dual equipment when you can use one things like that anticipation not turning it on at five but today six tomorrow six thirty 
that energy savings then and monitoring the equipment to make sure it's performing correctly and notifying us or my or somebody when it's not, as opposed to letting it sit there and just consume energy. Uh, it's $11,550. So it, that, that boils out, if you just add those $25,900 in savings a year, which is a significant portion of your, of your energy bill at this time. However, remember that that's not all obtainable. We kind of have to use our head. So, for the fire from the hip approach, which is what this is, and it's all it's meant to be, we come up with a best case, worst case. We try to use what's called the idle condition of the building and see if we can work around that and not, not try to claim that we can save money by turning all the lights off. That's just not, that's not practical. So, we come up with a worst case, best case scenario. Worst case, Utility savings alone is going to be, uh, what, well, worst case savings, total savings with just the basic CTC system is $13,600, $500 in savings. Worst, best case is $20,200. Okay? Going down to the different types of savings, and this will be, uh, I'll, I'll get into this here in just a little bit. Um, the annual cash, the total savings should be somewhere between 34 and 49, but that includes equipment savings, which Mike and I have talked about somewhat, but we have not. It's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here. I just wanted to put that in there and tell you what that was. All right, so then your annual cash, cash back should be somewhere between 21.5 and 40. Now, it's interesting that that 40 is bigger than the utility bills itself, but remember you've got a very expensive chiller system down there that it's, it's not expensive right now, but when it fails, it will be. <laughs> so we have to be careful that we're, we're, we, we consider these things, but don't count them. Okay. All right. That said, a complete system with, uh, with equipment and voltage monitoring, you would be looking at somewhere, we think at this point, you would be looking at somewhere between a 1.4-year uh, total system payback to a 2.9-year total system payback. That's the fire from the hill. <coughs> now this is not, if you recall from our last conversation, this is not a direct digital control system. This is a CTC system. It replaces everything. You keep the original equipment and the equipment safety, <coughs> the, the, the heating and air equipment, the fake wells, the children's, the boilers, the valves. You, you keep all of that, <coughs> everything else comes out. This becomes the control system. All so right. you're talking about um, there would be no temperature control in any of the offices. It would be, how is that accomplished? All what? of these thermostats and override timers and time clocks and, and extra relays, they would all come out. Everybody would have, uh, everybody that wants one would have a a sensor and a control point in their room. If it, it would, would work just like at home, if you're hot, turn it down. If cold, turn it up. And that is handled though offsite somewhere. No, everything Who's is in this building. I, I see what you're saying. No, we do not have a maintenance contract, and you do not have to call us on the phone. Um, if you want to change something, you change it here. For example, if if your boardroom today was hot, you would turn that down. If uh, uh, if it needed additional cooling from looking at everything else that's on this. This fan coil unit here serves about half this wing. So if there was enough demand for cooling, then it would do it. Uh, when we get into commission rooms, boardrooms, we get into strange software, for example, or custom software, which is what CTC is. Everything is custom. We're only working this building. So you could reach out and hit that button and say, hey, I'm on board. And this becomes the sensor. Or it might just be counted twice. You know, whatever needs to be done. So then you would get your cooling. But no, everybody would have a everybody would have a slide. Everybody would have their input, and they would operate off of parameters that Mike oh there it is Mike would put in or Gina yeah or whoever whoever exactly right exactly right this this would work as as you you want it to work. We do not have a maintenance contract. You are unlike a DDC or most DDCs. You would not be required to call us every time you want to change the temperature or a time schedule, or, or how a boiler integrates, or when it's time to use the chiller, you don't have to call us. The training is always free. We always show uh, whatever it is you want to know. 
So whatever the county wants to learn, we teach. There's never a charge for that. As well, if 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 you were saying Tina would be the one of the system operators, that that would be awesome. Tina would not need to call us. Uh, as well, if Tina did need to call us, got in there and forgot something, or we had to cover something, there's no charge for the phone call. Well, see, we don't have a maintenance contract. That is not how we make our money. We make our money one time. All right. For this reason, for, for these 87.4 kilo BTUs versus the 55 kilo BTUs, what it should be, or what we think it should be, I got to initially, I always, almost always, when I see high savings like that or opportunity like that, I almost always think there's something obvious being done wrong, and I'm going to wind up saying no to the commission. I don't recommend you go. But he has already got mechanical that takes care of the equipment. There's nothing uh, seemingly, uh, or obviously, I should say, wrong with the equipment at this time. He's already doing night setback. He's already got night setback thermostats, which, by the way, will go away. CTC uses the same one for the entire amount of time, just different settings. Uh, so he's already doing everything right. So then I have to come back and look a little further. All right. The look a little further, uh, I have some ideas on, on where this opportunity comes from. Uh, I've already discussed some of them with Mike, but at this point in time, all I can really say is efficient operation of the existing equipment, specifically that chiller, or I should say especially that chiller. Um, there is a fair amount of opportunity in regards to just the chiller alone. Okay, but you can't manage how much current, how much electricity a chiller uses when it's running. And you can only manage how much it's off to some degree, because you have to cool the building, obviously. So what you do is you indirectly manage the chiller by managing the load on the water in the chiller and the dew point in the building. If you lose the dew point, you lose the building. If you lose the building, you lose your savings. You cannot put enough energy into the building to get it back until it gets nighttime and cools off and dries out a little bit and it continues to run. All these things have to be thought about. As well, the next step would be to make sure that that 55, or how much of that 55, is obtainable. I'm sorry, it's not 55, it's 31.8 of the savings opportunity in kilobtus per square foot. How much of that is obtainable by the CTC? We know, or well, we're fairly certain we know, that if you were to put a DDC system in here, it would actually go up, we think, to 93 or 94 kilobtus, <coughs> which is significant. So, that said, I had to decide whether or not I would then recommend the full engineering. But once I found that it's not doing anything wrong and there's no significantly broken equipment, and there's there's no artificial load being imposed on the equipment or its or its usage in way of demand, that the only way we're gonna know this is the preliminary engineering. And that would be that would be the next step. Okay? No cost for the preliminary engineering. However, just like this, I'd be happy to do it. All right, no cost to the county to do it. No expectation to continue. However, I'm going to tweak that a little bit. Before I said no expectation to continue, because honestly, I, in a limestone building like this, I wouldn't share the, the opportunity. Honestly, I think the opportunity to be as high as it is. With the final engineering, our preliminary engineering, the final engineering is kind of invisible, it'll, it'll go on in the background is if we progress. Preliminary engineering, I will bring an engineer out here and we'll discuss with my uses in the building. If need be, we will then discuss with the mechanical to be happy to make a phone call. Uh, but we will wind up in our office, in our engineering office, sitting down with several engineers and looking very hard at uh, how we would design the system, what software we would need to write, if there's anything special, like, you know, commissioner's meeting room, <laughs> if there's anything, we, our, our courtrooms, you know, those are usually special circumstances. We would need to write specific software for that. And then, how much of this we can obtain. And then we would come back with a, this is what it's going to cost. This is what we believe we can save. And this is how, we, how we're going to do it. Okay? For that reason, for the expense that we're getting ready to put into this, I am going to respectfully request that you, as a commission, do not go 
to the preliminary engineering unless there's serious consideration to gain that 36 percent. And I'm doing that on my behalf, not yours. If your orders are to go anyway, I'm going to do it. And I will tell you what you're in for. We believe at this time that you are in for a total system cost somewhere between, and that's in the black in the middle on the same page, okay? Somewhere between 72,000 and 101,000. That's the range. It does, that range does not necessarily affect the range of savings. It doesn't matter if it's a cheap system, you know, on the lower end of the scale. The software will be what it needs to be to get the best savings we can get, but we cannot sacrifice comfort. We cannot sacrifice the equipment. So there's really no relation between the worst case column and the best case column. You get to look at each one individually. You know, this is the best case, worst case of the total system cost. But this is the best case, worst case of the savings. And, and this is just only used for a decision. Okay? I do have of the requests, obviously, that I've already stated that, that uh, you continue if you're serious. Obviously, I recommend you continue. These savings are significant for a county courthouse of this nature. I didn't expect them. So obviously, I recommend that you continue to the preliminary engineering. However, please, I am requesting that you only do so if there's uh, serious consideration Number one. Number two, I've included a, my commercial list again, but I've gone, I've gone one, four, uh, one forward than that is, is in the very back of two sheets, and they're right down the road from here. And those are the uh, aggregated summaries of uh, Hillsboroughs and Peabody. I understand that one of the commissioners lives in, in or around Peabody and might know the superintendent, um, and uh, Mike lives in Hillsboro and with no maintenance out there. And I can, of course, introduce them around and everything. So everything we do, we, from here on out, we have to be, I insist, that we be 100% straight. I don't advertise in the newspaper. I don't advertise on the radio. This is, this is where I get my advertisement, that list. On that list, it is not all of my customers by any stretch of the imagination. But it is the current list of people that are willing to accept phone calls. You may recall that I mentioned last time the list changes. People get tired of taking phone calls. <laughs> I take them off. <laughs> and then they want back on. There's no incentive to them. We don't pay anybody under the table. They don't have any incentive other than the fact that they like us. They don't get steaks for Christmas or anything like that. We, we just don't play that game. Uh, we're just, we never have, we never will. If, if, if that's what is required, you'd be surprised, maybe you'd be surprised, you might not be how often that is required, I just walk away. People shouldn't treat each other like that. <clears throat> My question to you is that the other figure cost you have in here was just using, not replacing any of our boiler, not replacing our cooler or anything like that, that's just controls for 101,000, is that what you use? That's correct. Worst case, best case at 72. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we, we use your existing equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Peabody situation, I'm looking back at Hillsborough's too, but mm -hmm. it was after the school. Is that how old the school was? That's what it was put in when the school was on the Peabody deal? That's when we put our system in. Yeah. That was brand new equipment back then. And well, now see, that was Peabody. I remember Peabody, of course. Uh, I was meaning I was around by then. I remember them all. But Peabody was interesting. They had a direct digital control system. I'll, I'll try to do this in 30 seconds. They had a direct digital control system. They got tired of their maintenance contract. They stopped paying their maintenance contract. This was superintendent previous to what, yeah. what purchased our system. Okay. So before that superintendent that bought our system, they got tired of the maintenance contract. They stopped paying for the maintenance contract, and guess what? The only way you can get service is get on the internet and buy these parts for an extreme markup. And a school can't afford to do that. It's crappy that you would expect them to. Yeah. All right? They don't have that. So, I mean, the state would wind up buying it, if anything. So it's, it's just, it was a bad deal. They did have somebody on the board, and let me, let me see if I can do this right, whose wife worked for a Johnson Controls, which is the system that was in that high school, in one boat building, that worked for Johnson Controls and promised to have a quote to revamp it, but she was almost entirely hospitals down there in Wichita because they've got 
tons of money. So she was almost entirely hospital set in Woodstock. Turns out, she came up with a quote that was just almost ten times of us putting in our system, which we expected. You know, I bet you, I bet you when the warranty's out across the street, I can get fifty percent there. You know, I may have to back that up someday. I hope not, but I bet I, I, forty to fifty wouldn't surprise me. But the warranty's got to be out. I'm not going to put the commission and put the county in a position where somebody's violated the warranty willingly. So it's just we got to fight the fight. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's interesting. But that's what happened to Peabody. Oh, and we took everything, uh, all of the controls. The, we left the air handlers. Uh, we left the, uh, the fan speed controllers because they weren't Johnson controls. They were square D. <laughs> and we left the dampers. We left the boilers and the chillers. Now, their chiller conversion did not go so well. When we got rid of their uh, controls on the chiller at the high school, this is just high school, um, there was a lot of rewiring and hiding that had been done by the chiller manufacturer that we exposed by getting rid of the controls. And it took them a while to fight them to get the chiller working right. However, we were able to show that this damage was intentional. And that was a huge help to them. We've been there ever since. I go, I go once, once a year. In fact, I do again. I, we get reports. I know Tina's going to be mad at me, but once the system's in, we, we expect utility bills. Just when you get them in the mail, you fax them to us. Because we keep track. Did something go wrong this month? Did something go wrong this month? And then once a year, I come back and say, this is what you did. Well, I'm due over at Peabody. Just got a new line out to this end. And, I, and he always brings me to the board meeting because he knows it's good. Um, and then he always sends me out after the board meeting to train some more people. <laughs> so we have a good time. <laughs> Whereas Hillsboro goes, thanks. No, I just sent it to me. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Take care, Keith. <laughs> so I do. But that's it. Sorry, it took so much time. I told you <laughs> there were going to be questions. <laughs> I'll get the information in here. It is. I tried to do it mm -hmm. clearly, but mm -hmm. I didn't want to eat your afternoon. Well, appreciate that. <laughs> is that an extra copy? It is, ma'am. The information at the very front is just my fire from the hip, you know, half an afternoon narrative to give the guys up in Fulton, the engineering office, something to to go by and make sure that 55, they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. That's all that was. Um, in fact, you know, it says that there are some other things in the building, but at this point in time, once I hit that 31, 31, 31 kilo BTU opportunity, I was done. It's like, all this is going to do is get worse. I'm going to stop. So I, I know for a fact you've got like a 45 gallon water heater on this floor alone that's not in there, and it's electric. And it runs all night. Doesn't need to. But you can't get it, let it get too cold or the vessel sweats. And you have to find a heater in 10 years. So a 10 year heater ought to be a 30 year heater. A 30 year boiler ought to be a 60 year boiler. All you have to just take care of it. Okay. That's all I got. Anybody have any questions for you? Do you have any questions? Can no, you have uh, any questions, Randy? Mike okay. there spent some time with Mr. Trout. Do you have any questions or comments? No, personally, I'm interested to talk to Keith Gosen and, and KVK, who services our current system. Tina knows all that. Really, where he used my name here, it really should have been Tina. She's the one I just go around here. But no, I, it sparked my interest. I first thought we were talking more like what the jail had been, and I and, and I've kind of come over the last today really to realize, ah, okay, this is something different. Tina, uh, Tina handles KBK? Well, there are service people here. Well, I understand that. Well, so it's all use? under her, her oh, authority. Well. I just work under My apologies. I, I hooked up, a, I hooked up a Mike and we went full speed. Mike is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how would you like me to follow up, find out if you would like to do the preliminary engineering? 
Well, I would like to take this and read it and study okay. a little bit, and um, we'll have Tina get back with you. And Wonderful. I'll see you inside what we want to do. All right. How's that? That's good. Okay. Thank you. you have a good day. Mm -hmm. You too, sir. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. And yeah. Tina, thank you for the bill. Sure. So we come to the end of the agenda. You do have applications to review for open positions. Okay. Um, so, does anybody in the audience have anything that they want to bring before the commission at this time? Jesse, you have copies? Yes. Okay. So I don't have the time to write down those locations. Oh, that's... But uh, if you wanted to look at the map on that uh, great book that I provided you guys earlier this year, yeah. that will have it in the back on the mm -hmm. maps. Okay. So the stars are the ones that you select. Stars are the ones I selected, and then on the far right column is the fracture critical bridges. So okay. That, Thank those you. fracture criticals get inspected once a year. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. For that and also, and also I need to let the scene, I, I need to let them know how many of you are attending that senior citizens right. meal I'm on the 18th. I've already got Kent down. Yeah. You were going to check me in because you had a conflict. I do. I have my eight. Um, I'm sorry, I have my junior out of attention. I'm really pretty yeah, punctual on that. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll let Kent go ahead and. We you started it. If that's we okay. Okay. Is that a rock job? I'll get you. Get me later. It's going to be a rock job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to go out there and just kind of whatever. <laughs> what's left we'll talk about. Oh, okay. So we will get back on it. Okay. See if I can buy the press for one. <laughs> okay. So does anybody else in the audience have anything they want to bring before the commission at this time? Mike, you sat there awful quiet. You have nothing? Okay. And nobody else? Hearing nothing? Yeah, you mentioned one thing though in his this last guy did. I don't know how many of you guys are getting that, but this demand in Peabody we've been asked to to be to make a decision what we're doing. And I can tell you just what he said, it just it can cost you some money on electricity. If you and I don't know what's the right one because I haven't made it yet, but mm -hmm. but our West Stars even sent that out to or, yeah, West Stars sent it out to us in Peabody, so mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you guys are getting that away. Anyway, it's, it's, it can cost us some money because demand in the summertime, your cooling bill is going to go up. That's what it's about. Cool. Yay. Okay. So, Ken, do you have anything? Nope. Mr. Jan? Tina? Nope. Make a motion to adjourn. We're going to oh. stay afterwards and do. Um, I would just say you do that in executive session during the meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Take an executive session to review those applications. Okay. And they are for which ones? Well, um, you have planning and zoning, which you've already looked at. You yes. need to just determine, um, you know, a consensus on interviews. Yes. And then EMS director. But that's so those we right. And so. those now, we can. I mean, I'm fine with it. Can you stay a little while longer? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can only stay till 12. Well, okay. So I'll have to come back. Hour. I'll probably have to come back in and review some of this stuff on my own. Um, I can probably tell you that later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can only stay until twelve. It doesn't take that. We can go in for what twenty-five minutes and probably be done because you've already reviewed those other ones and just the ones for the director, right? Okay. okay. So you you don't stay until twelve, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so instead of saying for a certain number of minutes, if you just say until 12 o'clock. Until 12 o'clock. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and make a motion that we do go into executive session then to, to discuss uh, personnel matters, specifically review applications for positions available with Mr. Jantz and the commission until 12 o'clock, pursuing KSA 7543-19B. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.